Hey, business owners, leaders, managers. Listen, the uh, great resignation is a problem that's plaguing businesses all over the world. Uh, remote work options were supposed to create loyal and engaged employees. However, the latest job figures coming out don't really support that. So joining me in today's episode of Top Dog Tips is leadership expert, Leah Fink, who's gonna share how you can turn, or how leaders can turn the great resignation into the great retention. Enjoy the show. Hi, Leah, and welcome to today's episode of Top Dog Tips, No BS, Expert Business Advice. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here, Greg. Oh, awesome, awesome. So, so Leah, you know what? Even in the best of times, retaining talented individuals has always been a challenge. Yet now with the pandemic, it's it's brought down the traditional business structures that uh, we depend upon. And those who manage people and teams are faced with a whole new set of changes and have, have had to adapt to the different changes. Uh, leadership is more important now than it's ever been. And those that are leading people, uh, managers, and or their, their challenges trying to lead a remote workforce, it's just a whole new set of rules they're, they're trying to, to adapt for. So, you know, tell me, where does that leave today's business leaders or managers who are leading this remote workforce? Yeah, I mean, it honestly can leave them in a bit of a tough place. One of the things that we know about people and how they work is we are very social. We're very focused on relationship. You probably know someone who's been in a job that maybe they didn't love the job, but they were willing to stay for their staff team or for their manager that they really liked. And you definitely know someone who is the opposite, who has wanted to leave a job because people don't stay for the job, they'll stay or leave because of poor or bad um, or, or good managers. So yeah. what's what's happened as we've gone online is we've lost some of the opportunities that we have to create those strong relationships. We've lost the opportunity uh, to connect with our employees and even for our employees to connect with each other, to be able to have the classic water cooler conversations, which are actually really important for social cohesion. So what I hear a lot of now is people who were very relationship focused, had really strong teams, are now really seeing cracks form and not due to anyone's lack of caring or maybe even no toxic people in the workplace, but simply because people can't connect the same way anymore. You know what, it, 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 is, a real, it is a real challenge. I hear that from, from a lot of different uh, managers and leaders. It's the, it's the, the walking down the hall and the, the hey, got a minute meetings are, are just critical. And the the face-to-face -face interaction, you know, looking somebody in the eye, it's, hey, you explain something and ask, do you have this? And, you know, the difference between a, a deer in the headlines look, a deer in the headlights look versus a, a comprehensive nod is, is so, so telling. So, so much, so much of our uh, communication cues and signals are, 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 are nonverbal and physical. And I think remotely that, that uh, that's a real challenge to try and replicate that. Yeah, and, and realistically, we do have Zoom. You can see some of those cues. And what I've actually heard more is that people don't want to reach out the same way online. It's really easy if you're already walking by someone's office to, to pop your head in, smile at them, ask a quick question, whereas people feel either the, uh, you know, the effort it takes to schedule a quick Zoom meeting or they just don't want to bother people in their home environment. So they don't take the time to have those small conversations, right? They're more likely to feel isolated and like they need to solve their problems themselves. And then of course they're not gonna reach out just to say hi in the same way that you would as you're walking by someone's office or you see them in the kitchen. And that's really where we're losing a lot of this. We start to interact only in this professional level at a meeting where everyone's talking through strategies or only when there's maybe negative feedback happening of things that are going wrong. Yeah, you know, it brings up uh, an expression that I've heard lots is, you know, I, I find myself these days of the uh, remote meetings, the, the Zoom meetings teams, you know, they, they sure are a lot more efficient 
but I'm really starting to question whether or not they're as effective. And I don't think they're as effective at all for all the reasons we just kind of outlined, right? Yeah, if efficiency is certainly important. There are some great pieces to efficiency. And I know some people have said that online work balances out efficiency in the way that although people might be distracted being at home, they are uh, more efficient in the actual work they're doing. That being said, efficiency isn't the only factor in what makes your business successful. And that's where the gap is, right? Mm -hmm. Is is if yep. you can take that time and make an experience that is bonding for your team, that is an opportunity for people to connect, then it really balances out that efficiency nice because you have this space for it. But if you're not creating those experiences, if you're not supporting your employees and having relationships with each other and with you as a leader, then you're missing a big opportunity. Okay, so maybe maybe what what are some some you know uh, uh, advice or tips or things that that these today's managers and leaders can do to uh, to help bridge the gap between the way it used to be and the new normal? <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, one of the first ones, which might be uh, a little bit easier, is find opportunities for once they just fun, and fun can still be team development. But it needs to require a social component and regularly that is not just your regularly scheduled Zoom meeting. So whatever that looks like to your team, creating opportunities um, for them to bond on a deeper level. It also requires um, from the leaders, when you're looking at each of your individual employees and how you're going to connect with them, unfortunately, it's going to take a little bit more effort because you absolutely need to continue to have those relationships. You absolutely need to be reaching out, figuring out what's working for individual employees, uh, seeing how you can best work together. Uh, what I've heard a lot of is kind of a, a, a short term gain, but a long term problem is people are feeling disconnected from their leadership. And in some ways that can make things easier if there were some challenges in the relationship. But it also means that when they come together, those challenges are just amplified. And in a long-term strategy for keeping talented employees, that's not going to work. So is, is there, do you, do you observe, do you think there's a skill gap that, that leaders and managers have to, have to uh, um, overcome? You know, again, the face-to-face the, the -face meeting interactions is something that we, we, we all grew up with, but to try and become more aware on how to pick up on these nuances in a remote environment, is is it related to skills or, or is it just come naturally with more observation? What do you think of that? I mean, my personal belief is all uh, relationship interactions are based on skills and it's not something maybe that we always focus on and because we have a more natural way we've practiced, obviously, for however many years you've been alive to have interpersonal in-person interactions, yeah. at, we haven't practiced those online. So all the skills that were maybe already a little bit weak are just going to be amplified in that way. And yeah. we really need to be intentional is what it is. It's not natural. Mm -hmm. You actually have to think about it and put in that effort to develop those skills and, and think about the relationship. Wow. You know, again, it sounds like it sounds sounds like, you know, a lot more work and effort is required. But really, the 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 upside is, you know, happier employees, retain employees, keeping the keeping the talent that you want, the uh, wanted uh, attrition or right? unwanted attrition. You, you want to keep these guys. The downside is, you know what, um, they're just they're just going to go away and you're going to have to replace them. You're going to have to go through lost productivity, the training, the costs and, and all the things that are associated with trying to onboard employees. Right. Yeah, it's it's a huge impact when you lose an employee. So a couple of things to consider. People work about 90,000 hours in their life. That is a lot of time. And so people do want that time to be happy. So they're going to go to a place that makes them feel good. That's because of positive interactions with other people. It's also, if you just look at financial cost, in Canada, they say it's around $15,000 to lose a more entry-level employee. That's between all the HR time, all the training time, like you mentioned, the lost productivity, it all adds up. And not just that, but when you're thinking, oh, man, I'm going to have to put in time to meet all my employees, well, how much time would it take you to train a new employee to deal with all those small things that the new employee doesn't know that you now have to help them with? 
that's not a, a insignificant amount of time either. We just think about it differently. I, I like to say that we should work on our ROR and that's return on relationship. You put the effort in, you get R -R. the result, which in this case, right, is you get to keep the employee, you get a happy employee that works really well for you. Uh, and it's the same as ROI. You put the money in, you get the money out. Yeah, well, you know what? If you don't have the time to pay attention to your existing employees and put in the extra time and effort to learn the skills to communicate uh, uh, efficiently and effectively, then you know you certainly don't have the time to be distracted and trying to ramp up and train new people to get them up to the level that your existing people are at. It's a uh, you know you know pay me now, pay me later situation, right, Leah? <laughs> Yeah, and, and honestly, it becomes a crisis cycle. Uh, I ended up stepping into a leadership position years ago uh, where we just had a staff turnover. And so I inherited a not very easy situation to be quite honest. And the challenge is, you know, if you don't go into that and front load your relationships, that skill development, that, that care into the people, then you end up with another staff turnover. And then you have less time to meet the new staff and introduce them. And it, yeah. it becomes a spiral of less and less time and more and more problems. Perpetual Whereas if you can get, like you said, out in front. It's, yeah, it's so important. It's a cycle of problems. So, okay. <laughs> so, hey, get, so again, we, we're talking about uh, situations, what ifs. Uh, can you share a story of, you know, where you've, you've had a client face with these challenges and, you know, how, how you work through it or walk them through it? Yeah, uh, very in a very quick way, I'll share a quick one. Um, I had an organization come to me and their team actually before pandemic was quite strong. And some of the challenges they'd been facing since pandemic, because of course there was extra stress added to the roles that they were taking part in, is their frontline staff were burned out, uh, more squabbling because of course everyone's burned out and stressed. And honestly, they were just they were just fracturing. They hadn't had an opportunity to connect as a team in a really long time and connect not just in the way of having meetings because they had a million meetings. And right. so that was really an opportunity for me to come in and look at what was happening because these people did have skills in their normal day to day interactions when they were in person and they just hadn't been able to transfer that online in the way that they wanted. And so that's where I was able to come in, create some situations where they could actually address not only how to have that social cohesion again, but also looking at pieces you know, of their self-care and how they were able to implement those, because those are side pieces that were also impacting their relationships and how well they were able to work. Okay. Okay, so I assume after you're able to come in and work with them that everybody was kumbaya singing from the same song sheet and all was right within the world again. <laughs> well, I, I didn't watch for any kumbaya, but there was definitely a lot more cohesion. You just watched people leave with with smiles, right? Yeah. I had one person tell me it was like one of the funnest staff developments they'd ever done in their life, which was a great thing to hear because it meant that they'd had that bonding they'd they'd gotten that reconnection that they'd been seeking oh that's great that's great that, that's, that's got to give you such a great feeling eh? oh so good okay cool okay well excellent so so leah can you tell tell us a little bit about uh, your company and the services that you, you perform yeah so my company is called all thrive and i protect people from the pain of damaged relationships and what that means uh, is the same thing we were talking about, for example, losing an employee. The pain of a damaged relationship for a company, you're losing talented employees, you're paying a lot of money, you're decreasing your efficiency. There's all this, all this external damage that comes when we can't create healthy relationships. So I work with companies and organizations and leaders to create really good um, quality culture really close relationships, really good interactions between leaders and employees. <laughs> Great. So that's all the time we have for today's episode of Top Dog Tips, No BS Business Expert Advice. So thanks, uh, Leah Fink from All Thrive. And listen, if you like what you saw, be sure to like, comment, and share. Subscribe to our YYC business. And you never miss another episode of our, our uh, wonderful show. So take care. Thanks, Leah. Thank you so much for having me.